Rosemary Rodriguez, domestic abuse, foul play, or simply an accident, we don't know. This is one episode you're not gonna wanna miss. We are in Kilgoy, Texas today, where we have a new case. We have a family that's you know missing their mom, went missing in October of 2019. And I think it's best that we just kind of dive right in. We're gonna introduce you to Francis, Fran, Granny, as I understand as well as Francis and Lita, and your mother's missing. So kind of tell us about, you know, kind of, kind of the build up to this as to what happened, what you believe. My mother was in a sort of abusive relationship and uh, we believe that her boyfriend, who is the last person who, who uh, admits to him being with her, probably has something to do with her disappearance. My grandmother is the last one in our family her to, to see her. Um, they went out to dinner uh, for her birthday in October, early October, and uh, after they dropped her off at her house was the last time that anyone from our family has, has heard from her. And this was October 6, October. 2019? Yes, sir. Okay. And then from there, we and we're at a certain location today because this location has some significance that a cell phone was found. Yes, so um, there is a man that has claimed that they were down in the river just kind of like magnet fishing for different types of items and things like that, but he claims that he found her phone on the bank of the river. So from the bank of the river, he picked it up and turned it on and he was like, oh my gosh, it really does turn on. And so he tried to get it unlocked and could it and took it to somebody to try to unlock it where they factory reset it. And then they sent the phone to Walmart, or he took the phone to Walmart to get money for it. And from the Walmart trip, um, he got $50 for it. And then I had a random urge to call her phone and it was on and it started ringing. So I started calling everybody and I was like, why is mom's phone's ringing? Like, we have called her multiple times and it's gone straight to voicemail. This is weird, why is it on? And then that's apparently when Gray County went and pinned the actual cell phone yeah, we, and got it. So on the day that the cell phone pinged or the, the day that the gentleman found it, what day was that? So he said it was early October or so. Um, the phone was pinged November 14th or 15th is when I finally called it and it pinged. It okay. started ringing. So, so we have a seven, six to seven day period of when, the, you know, when your mom went missing to the cell phone being found. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what the river conditions were right at this location at that time? I mean, are, was this dry ground? Do you know where the phone no. was found? Water no, there was, it was there. very deep. My granny said the water was very far through here so I'm assuming it was somewhere between this pillar and that pillar okay so, and, and the reason why I ask these questions is because you know if you know your mom did something on her own or whether it was foul play if a vehicle was brought in here at that time and the way that this flows depending on how quickly it was going you know a car could still be moved down the river here Absolutely. but in looking at this and the pillars and the where the car would have come in with it being as deep and shallow as it is here before hitting the main part of the river i'm just trying to visualize where the phone where, was actually found i well, think not, not the phone but I, i'm thinking car, car is what i'm thinking so you know? i'm thinking the car has got pushed down river around this way at donna's house it got pushed into the river into the main part of the river and it's drifted okay so you so you believe that we have we're dealing with two different instances yes so you're i thinking. believe they got into an argument and either he or she threw the phone out on this overpass okay and that's where how the found the phone was found right. and then at donna's house down here she said two or three days after we actually reported our mother missing, there were tire track marks that weren't there the day before. She walks her property almost every day. Uh -huh. So there was, wasn't tire track marks, she was working, and then she was cleaning up a bunch of brush and stuff around her house, and then there's tire track marks leading down into the river. So I think it's more of he was just trying to get rid of something. Into the river? Into the river. So, so she didn't have tire tracks just on the property. She actually has tire tracks going into, into the, river. the river. Down into the river. The phone was found here, but I believe the car was either pushed in down there. I can follow your theory on this one. And her boyfriend reported that she actually went to work on the 7th. Yes. And, uh, and that he saw her that morning and that night. Yes. So on the police report, he said that they had kind of got into an argument, but she left for work the next morning. 
um, and then came home around 4.30 to get her medicine back because she's type 2 diabetic. She also takes a list of medications, goes for all, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, that she left work, like got off work and came home to grab her medicine and then that's the last time he had seen her. But he had told my sister the, like that day that we reported her missing, oh well we got into an argument on the night of the 6th and then she left and I assume she was headed to you. Okay, so, so, so he's told two different stories. Yes, now. he's told us one story but he's told the police another story. So the police report has to go on what he said because he's the last person to see her alive. Okay, is there a reason why, you, I mean you reported this to local authorities, have they not scanned the river here? What's going on with the local investigation? So they claim to have searched the river, but they wishy wash back and forth of telling us information. They, they won't share anything. They won't tell us how they've searched the river. They've, they've, they've told me ways that they have looked for her, but they haven't told me whether they've specifically done sonar or if they just flew over with helicopters or just walked along the bank. I don't know how they've searched the river. And I know that it would put m our minds at ease to to know that the river bottom has been looked at, okay. and that we can rule that out as a possibility. Well, let's go. Let's go put a check mark on this one and get the answers one way or the other on this location. So, appreciate it. All right, come on. Adventures with a purpose, but they always all have names. Hi. Sorry to hold y'all up. Hi. Oh, oh no problem. Cool. I'm sorry. I kind of I should have told you time frame yesterday. Oh. Uh, so. I hardly ever stay here. Uh -huh. Maybe uh, four times a year. Um, at that time, the bar was open, so I wasn't locking the gates. Um, we're closed now, you know, due to COVID and whatnot. But nobody, <laughs> nobody comes up here to my house. Um, if they do, by chance. I mean, I get a phone call right then from people around, you know, in the area yeah. saying, oh, you got a black truck in your driveway. Matter of fact, the day Greg County called me when they came to search, somebody did even called me right then and said, no, oh, there's a black truck in your driveway, don't you know? But nobody comes up here, right? And anyway, so Greg County had called in wanting to know if they could search my property. I'm like, my property? I was like, yeah, have you heard about the missing lady, you know, from Walmart? And I'm like, well, yeah, it's everywhere. And um, I said, but my property, you know, I was kind of shocked. And um, they said, well, we got a tip. And that it was something that we're there by the river. And um, so I said, okay, yeah, sure. You know, do whatever y'all need to. And um, I turned around from Tyler and left to come straight back. And when I got here, of course, there was like 50 people here and, and search teams and dive teams. And they were all down here standing on the river bank. And they said, well, we want you to come down here. and. I said, no problem, and I walked down the riverbank, and I know like every inch of this 10 acres, like, I mean, I'm constantly working it. And um, I walked down there and I was like, what is that? And I said, a, a four-wheeler go down here or something? I said, that wasn't here. And they said, well, she drove a small car. And I thought, oh my Lord, whoever they called in and got, got that tip from, leading them to here, I believe is your answer. You know? Yeah, yeah, because I want to back up because I, I was under the impression you were walking the property and you just happened to notice it and mm. then you let somebody know and they did, mm -mm. we don't know to what this, to yeah. what extent the search was from there. Um, so so you found out about it because yeah. they already yeah. wanted here. Yes. Or they were here. Yeah. But they come right around, right here beside this deck and the tracks were, actually that kind of even looked like one, rolled straight and so the tracks clearly went through the river. They went down, but nothing came back up. I mean, they were, something went down this river bank. And Greg County was here for a reason, and they were diving, searching, but they never found it. Yeah, normally with the dive team, the way that they operate, and I'm not here to throw dive teams under the bus, but you know, we do things a little bit different. You know, I'm guessing that their dive team, you know, they had, you know, communication, they had them all tethered off, they were only going out, you know, 50 feet or so at max, and they weren't, you know, doing a full sweep. So that's why we're gonna jump in with sonar. Yeah, sonar first. But also, I 
I think that the reason why I think that you wouldn't be looking for a whole car is because the river's been low since then, like low this summer, and you would have seen it because the river, summertime, I mean, you can walk all the way down the middle of it, all the way down towards 42. But he has construction equipment enough to be able to like squish the and before he would with the people in, in mind or person in mind thinking of might have done this they've got shops and they're very well knowledge of i'm just saying i don't know i mean but, 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 but something's do, on wheels yeah but yeah you do have clear tire tracks that came down yeah well, it could so. have just been axle or you know what i mean the tires and axle and something chopped down and bungee right. to or you know well, tied we'll down to it or the, uh, I, I don't know through here and in fact, we'll just put the uh, back of it right here, if that's okay, and yeah. we'll just unload the trailer, and I say, let's jump in. This actually has a more of a float than I thought. So if we do have a 2-12 to 12 minute float, so you have a hole that drops in there. So this, I mean, this is my prediction right here, by this log. And that right there blows my prediction. To help explain sonar, if you guys have not been here before, this is down imaging. So this is shooting from the top of the boat down, so anything that's black is the water. So you'll see that, you know, we have like a four, eight, 12, and so, you know, right now we're at four feet deep is hitting like the top of this branch right here on this tree that's coming up. So this one is a picture in time shooting downward. This is a picture in time shooting left and shooting right. So we're shooting 75 feet to the right, which is shooting over the bank and then 75 feet to the left. Now we're not in the center of the river anymore because we've already come down the river and now we're heading back up and we want to take a different route coming back up so we can grab a different view um, than we had before just in case we miss anything. So this one side imaging from the boat here, anything black is water column and then you hit the bottom of the river and then you're casting right and you're casting left. Now this one is live scope so you can actually see fish they will be swimming by underwater. You see one, there's a fish swimming in there. Anyway, so this is in real time. So like like you're watching, dang, yeah, I'm TV, in, live, in real time. So picture in time, real time. So far a lot of uh, tree branches and possibly what I think are alligators. Hmm. That's fun. Right there. Right, right there. See that? Throw me a magnet just for kicks. We're up, side. You're right on top of it on this side. Yep. On it, whatever it is. Magnet. That's magnet. Or your anna tree. Well, I just got off of it. I was able to pull off. So, move up here. Okay, let's tie it off. We think we're on metal. That uh, it's definitely been buried. Only about a foot and a half of it is exposed. Whatever it is, uh, it is square in shape. Lines up with you know. And then if a flood, you know, floods have come through in the last you know year. So we can't say for certain, but we're gonna put salmon in the water and then we'll verify.
It's a uh, just a rusty old box. Not at all what we're looking for. Okay. So Dan, you want to put your uh, life jacket on? We'll yeah. Jump in the boat and then or go down to the bridge. Yeah, we'll scan a little bit more here, but then we'll go down the river. Right here is where Sam was at. Sam was here. So now we're looking for something new that Sam was not on. And that's something new. That I just picked up. Four feet in height over here. Right there, what is that? Right there. Does that not look like a wheel right there? It does look circular, yeah. Right here, right here, right, right here. That's four feet in height. Throw yeah. the magnet. I, I think that's just a tree though. It's hard to say. Tell me if you're sticking anything. Magnet or tree? It feels like a tree. Yeah, I think you might be right. Oh. Metal? Or are you stuck in a branch? That's a branch. You're, you're pulling on a branch. I can see that one. Yeah. Yeah, it does feel like it but, is. But what's right underneath of it though? Like you're pulling on a branch, but there's like something right underneath of it. Just pull, pull that up again. We don't know if it's, oh uh, well, we're hitting some tree, tree branches too, but it looks like it could be on top of something. So, it, it appears as though we have some more square shape right here. And it kind of looks like windows here. Is what this looks like right here. Oh yeah. See that? Now we're not moving, so this one's, this picture in time is not gonna work because we're not rolling over it. But when we're, with the live scope right what, over it. What if we tried 360 with that? Oh, good idea. Right there, I'm just seeing trees. Get about there. This is that thing, though. Yeah. Yep, that's definitely square. It looks like a window on there. So the way that we read 360 is this hat, you know, so it goes around, and again, this is taking a picture in time. So it's taking a picture in time that just happened here, and it's taking a picture in time that just happened right here. And so we're going to get two readings as it goes around and refreshes it. And so what we're looking at, at right here is our area of interest that's not a tree, that we definitely have square shapes in there. Kind of looks like the bottom of a boat, though. I'm not sure what it is. If you look at it, you could, that could also be windows. Like, look, that's, that's a wheel there, a wheel there, and a mirror there. See that? Uh -huh. True. So let's put it in front of the boat now. I mean, I'm seeing, a car, I'm seeing a car right there. What? What is its orientation? Upside down is what it looks like to me. Wheels up. And this right back here is what Sam was on the first time. Is that metal box right behind us? Uh -huh. But let's now move out in this direction. So you, you just hold the rope, yep. and I'll just spin us that direction. Our line uh -huh. is on the trees right in front of it. Uh -huh. So then just come downstream like three or four feet, you'll run right into whatever it is we got eyes on. Oh, he's still, he's still down. It's a hurt here. It's not a... What, what is it? It's like a, uh, it's like a uh, long rectangle shape. And then there's like this piece of wood that goes across this way. Okay. It looks like it's some kind of agriculture or something or other. Okay. This tire tracks had to come from somewhere though. Yeah, it's not making sense to me. <laughs>
So how long is the river from where we started this morning to the bridge? I, mean, I guess uh, about a mile and a half. Yeah. Let's give you my guess. I think it's taken us what about 30. Actually, well, I did a news thing at noon, right as we soon as we left, so 37 minutes. We did our first interview here this morning, and so this significance of us being back here at the bridge is because the cell phone is what was found up here. And then initially we thought that the water was a lot higher, but after talking to Donna, the water was actually only up to, you know, maybe like that first little plateau, like another five feet there, which means that this is absolutely the location that the car can be driven off into the river. So that's why we're back down here, just to see if we can put the car and the phone together. I wouldn't put it any further down than, I mean, we're gonna hit this tower there. I wouldn't put it past that tower. Cars by the bridge? No cars by the bridge. Now we gotta figure out how to get out of here because everything here is super muddy. So right now I can, I mean it scares me every time I say I am 100% saying that we clear this area. Right now I'm saying you know 99.9% .9 chance you know that I have cleared this area. I'm very confident that we've done what we need to from Donna's place down here to the bridge. Okay. So we've now cleared two locations thoroughly. What I'm interested in next, you know what goes through my head is where did she live? Where does she work? Okay. And from there, let's say that, let's say that this is not foul play. Let's say that she did go home the night of the sixth. Let's say that she was, her intention was to go to work on the seventh. Okay. So I want to see what bodies of water are potential accident scenes okay. between those two locations. So yeah, absolutely. Let's pull that up on the map next, unless you have something that is like, Jared, my gut is telling me we need to go here next. No, um, not particularly. Um, like her work is literally right down this, this road right here, but she was at her boyfriend's house, which is down right around this corner over here. And my mother's house is actually right around here. Like okay. It's all within like a 10 mile Okay, so 10 mile radius from everything. Okay. Do you believe that she made it home that night with, with because they they were seen at the McDonald's on yes, surveillance? Uh, yes, down this road right here, and they come this way and go down this road to get to his house. Okay. Um, and she was pretty much living with him at okay. the time. And okay. then he told my sister that he believes that she left from there to go back home, which would have been this road or to, you, to oh, your grandma's house. To my, her house, my sister's house. Oh, your mom didn't live with the boyfriend. She was staying with him, but no, she owns a house right over here. Okay, so where did, where did she sleep at night? With Okay, with the our, boyfriend? Yes. Okay, so that's what I wanted to take a look at then, is let's say that they did drop grandma off, they did make a home, so, and you said that they take the same path every single time, so yes. we, we know which way they went. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I would say let's just leave here. Okay. Let's not park right in front of the house, let's not really make it known. So okay. just take, take me past it or near it. Okay. And then let's start looking on the way we'll look at the bodies of water and then we'll look at where how she would have gotten to work from there and it would have been the same road coming back to get to work for no her? she probably would have took another back road go forth road which I'll, we can we can take that road to you but okay so, you. so let's take those two routes then okay sounds right. good sounds good thank you Bye. This one would have been just that night coming home, but then if she went missing in here, then the boyfriend would have been with her. Plus, you have a fence, fence, fence. Your shallow. destination is on the right. Yeah, somebody would have noticed. Fence, 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 fence. Fence, fence, fence. Yeah, you have nothing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah trees. Trees right behind it. She not That's get in there. Not get in. Not get in. All right. So I'm ruling that one out. Now we have an ant's house that's back here with a shop and a pond, but now we're talking about foul play if you go with that route. Yeah. So right now that's a, if the detectives have something suspicious, then they need to get on, on that pond. Yeah. So our next location is going to be this creek down here. That's not even... No, that's absolutely nothing. I mean, that's... I mean, quick magnet in there, right? Yeah, I mean, we can see right there. There's nothing there. You can actually see the bottom right there. Yeah. I mean, maybe if it's just right, but I mean, 
you would really have to drop off right there. Yeah, I mean, you can look, look, you see the rocks. Yeah. Rocks, rocks, I can see rocks. Yeah, but let's, let's just, for instance, some dumb reason, let's say that far side. All right, let's go down there. Just real quick. I think that our next move is... So let's do this. The, what I would like to do, ne do next then is let's finish this route on 31 towards Walmart. Okay. We'll get off the exit. We'll make a left and then you can leave from there. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. There were no more uh, bodies of water between her house that she was staying at with the boyfriend and her work over at Walmart. So with that one, it, it, you know, there was like two creeks, yeah. really shallow, really shallow, couldn't get into, and then there was what looked like a, an actual like lake or slough on Google Maps. However, when you drive up next to it, I mean, you're looking maybe 18 inches deep, really swampy, a lot of mud clumps. There's nothing that for her to get in over there, and it was far enough off the road. So with that one, uh, we've ruled that one out as well. Where we're heading to right now is we're actually heading to Lita's house, which is the house that mom acquired back in 2017 in a divorce. And this is the house that the girls actually grew up in. So both Francis and Lita grew up in this home. So we're gonna head there and look for any bodies of water in route as we're heading over the Sabine River on the way to on the way to Lita's house. I just went into this funeral home to ask them for permission. We're right next to a cemetery. So funeral home, cemetery, over on FM 2206. And there is this pond right here called Cemetery Lake. Now, he denied me access for the reason of they're owned by a corporation, they can't get in touch with the right people. Yeah. And if they were able to, then we're gonna be required to have X number of insurance and liability waivers and like everything under the sun. All, all the things. I explained who we are, what we're doing, you know, there was even somebody just in there that's, you know, burying, you know, a family member for the second time in three months who Recognize. recognized you and me, which was, you know, one of those things. So we even had the credibility of a viewer letting them know who we are, like, hey, these guys are legit. Yeah. Um, but my understanding also is that they didn't even let the sheriff's office onto this pond. Now, that's my understanding. Now with this one, this cemetery is in question because this right here is actually called Dead Man's Curve. And it actually, at one point, Cemetery Lake had the nickname Dead Man's Pond because a lot of people have actually missed this turn and have ended up in this pond oh, before. Wow. So this is not a, a you know, a, something that would be unrealistic yeah. for this pond right here. So right now it's in question we can't get onto it. Arrived. So our conversation with the cemetery is, I guess that's actually nicknamed Dead Man's Curve and Dead Man's Pond back in the day. And that's why they're redoing the road there because people have actually gone into the pond there. However, because it's owned by a corporation, they have said, we're sorry, you cannot gain access to it. And it almost sounds like they've denied the sheriff's office access to it as well. So I'm not quite sure, don't quote me on that one, nor is it confirmed. Um, they said, if you want access, we gotta go through all these legal hoops and you have to have like all this insurance. I mean, we're, we're volunteer, we're out here, you know, on our own time. We just simply don't have any knowledge or 
my ability with the commercial insurance that I'm looking for. Yeah. So right now we have a big question mark on that pond. You know, we're now at your childhood ho hood home. Yeah, this yeah. is where we grew up. So in 2017 is when, you know, your mom got divorced. Yes. And understand she ended up with the home. Mm -hmm. How much of her relationship did she share with the frustration um, that she had? And on the flip side of that, did she have any type of depression to where she would have been? Like, I'm checking out. I'm leaving my girls behind. I'm leaving mom behind. Do you know that type of history of how your mom has felt through the years? My, my mom has always been a pretty happy person. Um, she, she did get sad whenever the divorce was finalized with, with my dad, but Mark and I have been here for her and I don't believe she would have ever just she run off. She wouldn't have left these girls behind. Never. Okay. Not, not um, in, in this world would have. She, she loved my grandmother. They, they saw each other very regularly until she started dating this man. And he sort of slowly um, isolated her from all of us. As their relationship uh, went forward, we started seeing her a bit less and less. Um, but when they would argue, she would always come here. And usually he would come follow her here, trying to get her back. Right. And this time he did not. Um, so, really so, so, so she disappeared, and he did not come over like he normally does. So he didn't. No. So he didn't stalk her, he as I as I understand. Yes. At Walmart and wait for her to get off if they were fighting, stuff like that. Like he was was weird. He'd be all over, and then you know, now she disappears, and he's zero you know, concern. Has, and he hasn't concern. spoken to any of us since the day we reported her. Has, hasn't even tried hasn't to been help involved in like that, any you know? kind of trying to search for her. Or, um, reached out to any of us or yeah, ha it's hasn't strange. made any comment to the police department okay. because they've told me we've been in contact with him and he still says I have no further statements okay. so um, and coming back to this I just want to make sure that I ask the right questions and we rule all, you know all of this out um, because you know there's three things you know one foul play accident or check out with uh, her medication Besides the diabetes medication, you know, what other medication was she on and does it have any side effects that would, you know, cause something, someone to do such a thing? Not that I would think of. Um, I know she was on like high cholesterol. She had glycoma, so she took, she did eye drops to, for oh, her glycoma. There was nothing like psychological. But there was no like, yeah, there was no, she wasn't on any depressants or any of that. Any of that. Sort. Okay. So then let's come back to the, you know, I think that we've ruled out all accident locations from her home to Walmart to your house and to grandma's house, except for Dead Man's Curve Cemetery Lake. So that one is still on the map. You also have the foul play, possible shop pond behind Ant's house. The other thing I would now like to take a look at is going down either the accident or checking out for foul play is, are there any boat ramps in the area along the Sabrine River that's, you know, close to her, something that she would know. Was there any special spot that she would go and just kind of enjoy the water that we know of? Not no. that I know of, no. Any, any public boat ramps along the river that we need the, to go check? The closest boat ramp, even besides the one that's right there where we were at, which is a private thing. property, is all the way in Gladewater. Okay. Well, that's no. a, yeah, or Lake Park, which is this other direction. They're about from... 10 miles north or south of the yeah. spot we were at. Just Some the... people theorize. Like, he was uh, pretty pretty big in the fishing community. People knew him. and. Uh... But, but now we're talking accomplice as well. Yes. Right. So I, I, I'm looking for something close enough that he can walk home and it's not race his fishing so, anyway. so, um, I've been able to gain access to the phone records and ping the location of where her phone was at. Uh, I tried that, and, and Sprint told me I would have to have a court subpoena to get the exact pin, ping, pings. They could, they gave me a list of like text messages and what time, and, and it, it would say on there like a general tower. Like, it, was it moving around prior to it landing so it at the bridge? It doesn't tell you where it was, where the phone was. It was just telling you where those text messages were coming, coming from. from. Okay. Where do we want to take this from here? And let me see if we can uh, get some information for you as to these cell phone records, if there's a way around it. 
Hi there. This is a uh, strange one in that her phone was found on the bank shortly after she went missing and that her phone was active for two days after she went missing from what we can tell. Um, but where we're at on this one, the reason why we're calling you is a little bit of information as to what these girls can do to gain access to those phone records to see if this phone was moving around for two days and when it actually ended up on the bank that the uh, you know, magnet fishing guy found it. Okay, so a couple of things that are probably happening on the law enforcement side is they uh, there is software that allows you to go in and extract all of the information from the phone. Now, all of it is kind of a... a Yes, and, and depending on what the real condition was, you know, they, they may be only able to get certain parts of it, especially if there's any part that was encrypted in the phone, which would be difficult. But the other thing that the law enforcement folks can do is they can get an investigative subpoena to follow all of the GPS locations and the cell sectors that that phone would have connected with as it moved around over the course of those those couple of days so if if there was motion on the phone um, that would become interesting if the phone was in one place that is is equally interesting the family may with an attorney be able to get this cell phone provider to provide them the same information but they really should be working with law enforcement to make sure that um, they're not somehow uh, getting in the way of what the investigation may be doing, which, you know, oftentimes isn't moving as fast as family would like, but at, at least they would be collaborating with law enforcement who may say, hey, give us a little more time on the phone side of it or something like that. But that, th those are the options they have at this this point. Oh, and yeah. I'll, I'll always enjoy tagging along with you. Let, let me know how we can help. All right, sounds good. Uh, I'll, g All I'll right. give you a call later. Thank you, sir. You fellas be safe. Um, the next thing we need to do is, you know, are you familiar with Mike King and Profiling Evil? Okay, so that's who we were just on the phone with, you know, so he's a detective out of Utah. He has a YouTube series as well, and with that, he's really helped us from the GIS side of it and the mapping, and, you know, we can start taking a look at the different locations and, you know, different routes that your mom would have taken. Um, you know, if we can gain access to those cell phone records, I mean, he'll break them down and be like, all right, you know, he spoke with you X number of times a day, you know, he texted you, and, you know, he's going to start piecing this together as to all of her communication as well as the communication to his cell phone phone as well. So we really need to get a hold of that cell phone data is what we need to do. And that's where you know, I think we need to get you on his show sooner than later so that way we can all talk about what we did here today and help you know guide you in the right direction. Okay. From that one, um, I think that's about, you know, I think, I think that's going to be our next steps. And as much as we can do today until we can get onto Dead Man's Curve Pond. Phone and can, can we get onto Ant's property by chance? You know, we're going to be back in September, October, but prior to that time, you know, are there things that we can do to help, you know, help you guys move this forward? Like I said, getting you on with Mike, Profiling Evil, and for the viewers here, um, I don't know if that's happening before this video comes out or if it's going to happen after. Regardless, we'll make sure that the, the uh, links and the information is down below as to that one coming together. And from there, I wish I had more answers for you today. But you know, we do have those answers as to you know sure. your mom is not at Donna's, you know, your mom is not at the bridge. Yeah. You know, and we just really appreciate all those. Oh yeah, for sure. It's it's more of a relief to actually have do it ourselves it and was, have it was somebody. very satisfying just to be able to ride along with you guys and, and just watch and just see it happening. Well we're glad that we were able to help you out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. On that, we do appreciate you being here for another episode as we, you know, come into the homes for things that are very, you know, very sensitive and, you know, allowing us to share your story with others so that way you're also aware of what it is that we're capable of from the sonar side of it to the diving side of it. And we really appreciate you being here today and a part of this. You know, this is an open source investigation. So if you happen to know of anything, you know, that just that one little puzzle piece that's going to bring us out, bring us back. You know, is there a certain body of water that we should check? Do you happen to know the boyfriend? Have you heard stories on this? If you have, make sure that you get a hold of us via email is the best way because we do check that one all the time. And as we've said before, AWP is not just you know, the two of us, the three of us. AWP is all of us 
helping to solve these cold cases across the nation. Thank you for being here. If you've not already done so, please do subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.